Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the participating at this session in spite of the hectic schedule today. So, so I'm going to serve as to say that the moderator of today's session. My name is Obala. So before that opening up the session, I'd like to say a few words. With so today you have the inter, uh, simultaneous interpretation services available. So you can see you have the channels, so you can select the language you want. And then, of course, actually, so you can actually listen to the, the English trans translations, or can, you can actually listen to Japanese. So from now on, so we'd like to actually that to open up the nuclear energy advanced human resource development plans. Thank you very much for kind introduction. Uh, my name is Kenji Takeshita, Director of the Laboratory for Advanced Nuclear Energy Institute Innovation Research, Tokyo Institute of Technology. Upon the opening uh, of the uh, Nuclear Energy Advanced Human Resource Development Forum, Systemic research in the field of the nuclear energy at Tokyo Institute of Technology, TIT, began in 1956 with the establishment of the Research Laboratory for Nuclear Resources re Reactors. In terms of education, uh, it started with the establishment of the Research Laboratory for Nuclear Reactors. There are some organizational changes so that the uh, since that there have been the changes, uh, the institute has been resumed in the advanced nuclear energy, and the department of nuclear en engineering has been renamed the nuclear engineering course, the laboratory and the academic course resumed the laboratory for advanced nuclear energy in the department all these years to have hand holding supports to education people in the field. Our proposal for the NEAHRDP was adopted as a feasibility study for the International Nuclear Human Resource Initiative by the Ministry of Education and we have started activities. This activity is planned to develop leaders in the field of nuclear energy who have the developed excellent global perspective. Uh, our institute will fully support this project. I would like to express sincere gratitude for the cooperation and support of everybody involved in this project. With that, thank you very much for your attention. And the next, thank you very much, Mr. Takeshi. Thank you very the much next. for your comment uh, so that we can hear only Ms. Suzuki's uh, voice. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, introduction. I'm Suzuki, Director with the Office of the Nuclear Infrastructure Research and Human Resources Ministry of Education. First of all, briefly, let me describe the background of the objectives of the International Atomic Energy Initiative Project. In the field of nuclear energy, uh, based on the lessons learned from the Fukushima disaster, we believe that the rigorous safety assurance is warranted and the innovation is in is intrinsic to our mission for the next generation. The development of advanced human resources, therefore, uh, plays an integral part in building the foundation of the nuclear power sector. So we need excellent talent more than ever, higher education institution decline. Against this backdrop, under the framework of this initiative, several universities collaborate to form a consortium to enhance the human risk for energy field in Japan, sharing large experimental facilities and hands-on trainings, more opportunities for study and the research abroad in cooperation with international organizations and collaboration and joint initiatives among different industries and disciplines, international organization and collaboration and joint initiatives among different industries T will be a center for the IT will produce human resources, we will lead global nuclear area and open new avenues in this field. Finally, I would like to conclude my remarks by wishing that today's forum will be the fruitful with active discussions over the global research and education in nuclear science. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Suzuki. 
well from now on so i'd like to actually to start the forum the first of all so we are going to have the presentation from that uh, professor of allah so about that especially that uh so the nuclear energy balance the human research development plans and its outlines Hello, everybody. So my name is Ovala from the uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology from myself. So so I'd like to just touch up on the, the project which has made the embark to happen. So I'd like to share that the presentation material with you. I hope it works well. Let me just introduce my presentation that last year, actually, so we are going to utilize the Q and A that the functionality of the Zoom. So we are going to receive your question, if any. The title is going to be the nuclear energy advanced human. First of all, so we have applied for the program for the uh, Ministry of Education. But the, before that, to gather the environment, environment that the energy that the supply has been diversified. For example, the new type of the energies, just like a biomass or the renewables. So such a kind of renewable energy has been that provided to us. So which are highly expected. At the same time, so that in terms of the electric supply, that the market mechanism is also introduced, so that the economicality, economicality has been important to be considered. On the other hand, so when we take a look at the global trends, SDGs are quite important. That's gonna be an international setting and the goals to deliver on. So among the 70 goals, as you see, so among them, so that the goals related to the nuclear energy is gonna be that we can pick up the three. Number seven is gonna be that affordable and clean energies. Number nine, industry innovation and infrastructures. And the number 13, climate actions. These three are strongly related to the nuclear fields. So this is gonna be a goal that we have already stated established by ourselves. So that's gonna be that national level, that uh, engagement to go ahead. And there's another thing. So recently, as uh, on top of あの、多様な、ま、いろんな方、ご経営の原子炉というものを投入しようということで、様々な研究開発が行われてきたというような状況にあるんです。で、こういったところを考えてですね、人材育成を考え so uh, we have to think about the talent development. That's going to be a background for one thing. So I actually did explain to you so that the venture capital has been developing the SMR. These kind of activities. So what type of the say that the talents are required? And then, as I mentioned before, that uh, as for the SDG on society 5.0. So once again, that the little issues and economic advance that which should be well balanced by a system that highly integrates the cyberspace and the physical space. Of course, that the renewable energies, that the IT technology should be integrated. And then we try to actually realize that decarbonization and of course, that should be contribute to that uh, development of the uh, local society. 
So this kind of topic has been discussed. Of course, for that, so when it comes to talent for a nuclear field, we need talent who made it happen by the addressing these challenges. And then, of course, when we take a look at the say uh, other domains outside of the state and nucleus, so we need to have the innovative technology to develop in the various engineering domains. Ten years ago, for example, so that uh, uh, ten years ago we have never ever imagined, but that such as things have actually eyewitness right now. So for the short period of time, that. Uh, Need, that needed to be that uh, are in, implemented in the societies. Of course, the younger generation is intrigued with the domains where the new techno technology innovations are constantly created. But uh, when it comes to nuclear fields among the younger generations, so how do they consider that? Of course, they consider that the nuclear field is important, but that, they, that nuclear field isn't considered as non-novelty, no non-appearing. That's what they think. So along with this background, so we need to actually address the challenges ahead of us. So that uh, human resources that we need in that uh, nuclear fields, of course, we need to develop talent who can lead the utilization and development of the nuclear energy by corresponding to changing society. And then, so we will make the best use of the outcome, the result of the human development that we have been addressing so far. But at the same time, we need to establish a stronghold of the HR development. So we will never neglect that experience up until now. So we need to leverage the experiences. And based upon that, we can try to challenge the new ch new things. So once again, so for this time, so we have actually applied for that the initiative are driven by that the Ministry of the Education as a business. So we try to actually the, uh, nurture that the good talent. And so as a stronger host, we try to just establish the scheme to make it happen. So this is going to be a problem to provide it to that uh, next Minister of Education. That's exactly that nuclear energy advanced human research development programs. And then, so uh, I am the representative of this program. So in terms of this, our proposal and programs, so that's going to be the, the ideal image of the talent that we need. So. So we need to have the engineers, the scientists who could lead innovation with the future nuclear energy development. And of course, in that case, those who need to have the basis for the nuclear engineering, which is important, but at the same time, so they should have that, that knowledge about the energy system and the various uh, advanced technologies, such as other energy resources. And then maybe that the economic perception could be needed so that the various type of that said, advanced technology needed to be understood. And then of course, they need to have the global mindset. And of course, they need to have that the strong aspiration and capability to start at the various corporate activities. So I think that uh, venture, venture capital and the nuclear fields are not well linked, but uh, I think that uh, inside a big company, there's another type of the said that, uh, company so that means that uh, we need to just create something new and then that needed to be that realized. Such a kind of aspiration could be needed. And again, so this person uh, should have developed the international uh, perspectives, not only the English uh, proficiency as well as the communication abilities and this person should own uh, management capabilities, including that's the entrepreneurship. Uh, so that is the ability to build uh, and manage the organization and the, organ uh, and, and the company. So those are the, uh, the talents we like to develop and nurture. 
to be more specific, uh, there are two uh, activities uh, we are thinking about. The one is that the uh, nuclear innovator uh, nurturing camp and the nuclear innovation uh, studying abroad, and it is uh, adapted. It was adopted as a feasibility uh, study. Uh, if that our proposals uh, was approved to continue, then uh, this project uh, would uh, go on for the next seven years so that we will work um, very hard uh, to make our activities successful. The one is that uh, uh, innovator camp. So this but actually, there is the, the role model uh, that is a nuclear innovation camp uh, launched in uh, United States, started in, in 2016. Uh, so after my presentation, the two distinctive speakers uh, would particularly talk about this uh, boot camp. And uh, it is very, impressive that the young researchers and the students uh, and the participants uh, taking the initiative uh, to organize this boot camp. Uh, they discuss a wide varieties of the topics and at the very end of the boot camp, uh, we, uh, they will have the, the pitch and that we'll have the competition so that the major participants uh, are designed for the graduate students uh, and the uh, objective uh, is to bring in the innovation in a nuclear uh, field, advanced nuclear field and entrepreneurship uh, development. Uh, so we heard this bootcamp, uh, we were very uh, impressed and uh, we are very excited about it so that uh, we would learn from this boot camp as a model and we will launch that similar initiatives. Uh, therefore, that we will invite maybe the 15 uh, young researchers and students, um, not from Japan, but also the abroad, and uh, we'll, we'll do this boot camp in Japan. The, particularly the hallmark, hallmark of this bootcamp uh, is at the international or global perspective so that uh, this bootcamp should be uh, incorporated uh, in the activities uh, of the global uh, collaboration. And uh, we definitely have the discussions among those diversified participants. And we also uh, uh, work flat out uh, to introduce NIB to Japan. The Japan has an experience uh, in being a part of the NIB and uh, it was done in Paris last year uh, so that we'll uh, invite the NIB uh, organizations and learn how to um, manage and operate uh, NIB. Uh, so, uh, what uh, thematic uh, thematic topics on, and would be picked up? Um, we are thinking hard uh, very much, and uh, well, the Japanese version of NIB would be only one week. Um, so it is not only the uh, uh, nuclear uh, science, but also that entrepreneurship. Uh, sociological aspect and the business aspect, those are the topics that we would like to pick up. And uh, working closely with the GIF, a fourth generation in, in international forum organized in Paris, the headquarter of the OECD. And uh, even that the graduate student uh, can gain the uh, credit if they participate in the boot camp. Uh, so that uh, there are several uh, aspects that we have to fix in terms of the design and uh, content of the bootcamp. This is a part of the uh, global experience. Therefore, that um, when we 
organized an international symposium regarding the innovative uh, uh, nuclear technology once in three years that we definitely collaborate with this international symposium uh, so that we could uh, offer more opportunities uh, for the young researchers uh, to horn and advance their uh, research capabilities uh, and to come up with the innovations and uh, uh, entertain more innovative ideas. So the COVID-19 uh, makes a everything very unpredictable. Uh, therefore, that uh, looking at the situation of COVID-19 that uh, we are poised uh, to make the plan of our boot camp. And the next topic is that studying abroad uh, in nuclear science. So there are several types of the studying abroad but in here, the major objective is the research of the uh, nuclear science. So the major participants would be the graduate students or PhD students. So we limit, or it's, of course, it really depends on the uh, budget, but we are thinking about 10 uh, students or so. And the destinations include MIT, California, Berkeley, Wisconsin uh, University, North Carolina, Texas A&M, uh, so that we, so that we will unofficially reach out those universities uh, and to start negotiating uh, with those universities uh, to accept our students, uh, so that the studying abroad. Uh, should be uh, the great opportunity to learn something and the takeaway uh, what it what it takes for the successful uh, studying abroad is the the takeaways from uh, the uh, foreign uh, universities uh, and the what the students learn from this studying abroad experience um, the students should be should uh, be engaged in the the more innovative research and the bringing more innovative ideas uh, to the uh, nuclear science. And uh, we started off uh, the um, the returnees uh, from this sorry, uh, from the foreign uh, American uni uh, U.S. universities. Uh, those students uh, should be delivered to the European uh, Nuclear Educational Network uh, and, and Russia uh, so that the um, so that the studying abroad experience uh, should be um, leveraged and uh, capitalized uh, in the real life or a real business life and the research uh, areas. And, uh, this is an old chart. So this initiative uh, is uh, uh, primarily driven by TIT, but um, the lot, there are a lot of organizations to give us the support, like to TIT, Fukui University, uh, Nagaoka Technological uh, University, Tokyo University, Tokyo uh, Urban Toshi University, Fukushima Engineering uh, High School, uh, UCB, UWM, UN, NIE, um, and the uh, T TEPCO, Toshiba Energy, Hitachi GE Nuclear Energy, and MHI in the Japan Nuclear Power Laboratory organizations. Um, so those are the older organizations uh, come together to support our initiatives. Uh, so that those organizations uh, are giving us the um, their experience uh, and we are asking those organizations to come to send some of the experts as the mentors to the to our boot camp. And that number of the collaboration universities are on the rise. In that, and also that we are 
trying to design that program suitable uh, for the grad, uh, not only the graduate student, but also the undergraduate students or high school students. So this year is a first year uh, of, of our initiative so that this is we are in the, the planning stage, but from the next year, uh, we will take the more actual and concrete actions to make it happen. And lastly, this initiative is only possible uh, with the corporations and the support from the wide varieties of the organization, not only in Japan, but also abroad, so that uh, we are hoping that your continued support and business. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, let me conclude my presentation. Thank you so much. So let's accept some of these questions uh, from the audience. Uh, if you have uh, questions, please send me, uh, please write down the, the question in the chat box. Do you have any? Maybe that the later on you can send that uh, your question to us. That's going to be okay. You don't have any specific questions so far? Okay, understood. Thank you very much for your kind attention. So that's all for myself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Obala. And from now on, so, so we are going to have the presentation from that uh, Professor Adrian Code from uh, the University of Wisconsin Medicine and from Mr. Liva Bennett from the Nuclear Innovation Alliance. And this presentation is has been already recorded. But before their presentation, I'd like to touch up on their two guests. For one thing, that uh, Mr. Adrian Coet. So he has been an assistant professor in the Department of Nuclear Engineering and Engineering Physics at the University of Wisconsin Madison, where he manages the material degradation and the collision of radiation laboratories. And as before that, he worked as a nuclear material research engineer at the UDF Electricity Defense in France. And then in 2014, he got hired at the ED, uh, EDF with a PhD in nuclear mechanical engineering from the Penn State University. Over the last five years, Dr. Kuei has worked on developing his research group around the fundamental understanding of the materials degradations of alloy design for the extreme environment and medical research programs evolve around the fuel cladding corrosion in LWRs, developing structural materials and the cladding for molten salt reactors. And then designing novel radiation resistant compositionally complex alloys. And then he is also the co-organizer of the Nuclear Innovation Bootcamp, which aims at training future entrepreneurship in the nuclear field. And then let me just introduce the, Mr. Riva Bennett. Riva Bennett is a nuclear policy analyst at the Nuclear Innovation Alliance, where focuses upon the topics related to global clean energy development and the stakeholder engagement. And he is also the lead organizer and a past participant of the Nuclear Innovation Bootcamp. Prior to those roles, Mr. Bennett worked in both EDCA, EDTEC, and international development with a focus on the water and the sanitation access. And say in January 2021, the next year, he will begin as an MS in a nuclear engineering at the University of Michigan in Annabelle. So that's going to be that uh, introduction of those two uh, guests. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation uh, to present at this forum. Uh, so today we we'll talk about the uh, nuclear innovation bootcamp as an example to build the next generation 
uh, for advocacy here. Uh, my name is Adrian Quay. I'm a professor in Medicine, Medicine, and uh, I've been involved in the movement for now uh, three to four years. And there is my colleague here, River. Um, uh, River Bennett, who works at the Nuclear Innovation Alliance. Um, so, but before starting, I always like to put a little bit of context. Um, first of all, it's important to note that the Nuclear Innovation um, uh, is organized by a composition by you know, multiple organizations, the Nuclear Innovation Bootcamp, UW Madison, uh, the First Step Zero Initiative at the uh, University of Michigan, and also uh, from UC Berkeley. Uh, uh, so, uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, in terms of the context, what's important to note here is that uh, there is um, the prediction that have been made by the International Energy Agency uh, reported that more than fifty percent of uh, the energy production uh, in uh, from fossil fuel. So, still, even though uh, there is so much debate today. The prediction are relatively alarming uh, in the sense that uh, you know more, more than 50% of those energy production will uh, really uh, shift to gas. And, gas. and that's a bit of a problem when you consider the, the IPCC report uh, that came out in 2018 that limits the global warming to about one and a half degrees C. Well, this is the kind of slope uh, that one needs to follow uh, in order to reduce uh, those. Um, Global warming um, up to 2100. And you see that slope is very, very uh, uh, going downward in terms of the emission of CO2 per year. And so the problem is um, how do you, you know, make this possible? You know, that there is definitely a discrepancy between what is and what's predicted. Um, and, um, and so we think here, of course, that there are a lot of studies. Help uh, really to reach our goal. Uh, as an example, for instance, I always like to compare French uh, uh, and uh, the Germany. Uh, consumption from the strong So, for instance, in France, um, France has a large fleet of nuclear reactors, and uh, it was um, about in the evening. We had about 40 gigawatts coming from uh, from the consumption coming from nuclear, and um, you know, uh, very little natural gas, no oil, uh, no coal, a little bit of wind, a little bit of hydro. Thanks to the but so, what's very important that the carbon intensity is in France. And if you compare that to Germany, which is often shown in the example for the energy transition towards renewable and, and with the objective of reducing the carbon emission, well, we have about 330, almost five, uh, four to five times more carbon emission than France. And the main reason is because, of course, of this, uh, there is a combination of the fact that the capacity of is pretty low uh, because they are, they are pretty of the earth, or, you know, about 10 gigawatt and everything is used. And the solar, of course, at night, there is a little bit of wind, but only the natural gas and the biomass and the coal are here to, to um, uh, supply the, the electricity. So, um, so clearly, we think that the nuclear is a strong place to play. Uh, to play. So, in the US, what has been done, uh, so things have started for advanced nuclear really around um, the, the uh, It started really around 2015, 2015 2016, about four to five years ago. Uh, first of all, there is this uh, uh, consortium or lobby called Third Way out of Washington that started the uh, Advanced Nuclear Summit. Um, and uh, to come together, all the people involved, in industry, politicians, to be there to talk about what we talked about Advanced Nuclear and what needs to be done for the future. We also started the first uh, nuclear innovation group uh, at that time, which uh, and we'll talk, of course, a bit more about the group itself. And there was again the gateway for advance uh, for accelerating innovation nuclear that was started by the fundamental uh, the advanced nuclear industry and 
In the 2017, <clears throat> of course, the relatively bad news, the Westinghouse goes bankrupt. Uh, but uh, relatively good news is the uh, three modular reactors, a new skill license uh, was submitted to the Nuclear Re Regulatory Commission, NRC. Uh, the DOE uh, Advanced um, uh, Research Project Agency, RPAE, was started to also fund nuclear. So RPAE is usually funding uh, you know, very close to market type of uh, projects. And so it's a really a kind of shock that Arbani decided to call the advanced nuclear energy, which means that uh, the government in the US is considering advanced nuclear as a mature technology to become uh, marketable. And the company, uh, which is a uh, relatively similar player of power, uh, now in California. Um, the, in 2018, as I mentioned, there was realized in the US that global warming was a problem and the future if nothing is done. And um there is the uh, um and so so a few a few, few milestones like this in twenty nineteen more recently, uh, there was the, the NEMA, which is another institution that was voted to help with the innovation and modernization of nuclear. Uh, there was also the Nuclear Reactor Innovation Center that started at the IDA National Lab. And there was a lot of uh, micro reactor uh, funding. Uh, to the Department of Science. Uh, so, as you can see, a lot of um, things have happened in the, last, in the past four years at the government level, at the level, to help. Uh, um, you know, and in, in 2020, uh, very, uh, very interestingly, the, the nuclear has became the first modular or nuclear reactor to receive an approval for the major milestone uh, here. And Oklo, which is an advanced nuclear reactor company, has uh, a reactor license application to the NRC as well. So things are really moving forward towards deployment of advanced nuclear in the United States. Um, so, what, in terms of timeline, how does it look like? As you know, so right now, uh, I mean, 2015 to 2020, we are in light water reactors. This is true all across the, the world, uh, in the US, in, in uh, Europe, in Japan. Uh, really, the focus is on LWR. But then, as I mentioned, uh, New Scale got elephants. Uh, so we're looking to commercialization of more modular reactor, which are based on the same kind of technology as NWRs. Uh, those SMRs will be around 25. And then five years later, we're really looking at the advanced nuclear reactor, uh, which are the molten salt, the liquid metal, and the BSP. And of course, innovation is needed to sustain that advanced nuclear, as I mentioned earlier. And so there is a strong advanced nuclear that is being developed in the US at the moment. Here is a, an interesting map showing all the reactor design types by colors that are being computed at different locations in the US. Um, and uh, you know, we can highlight, of course, uh, Terra's power. Uh, there is Oklo here. There is Terra power right there. Uh, so, and uh, uh, in MIT, that is pursuing the fusion reactors. So, you, you see a lot of um, uh, emulation and, uh, all across the board in the US. But of course, this, this kind of uh, a portfolio here, which is very, very encouraging, can only be achieved, and I mean, the risk can only be achieved if we have a good workforce for that environment. Uh, so we need to really educate the next workforce for advanced nuclear, and I'm not meaning here that we need to educate them to uh, the, 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 the engineering and the science behind nuclear, because, you know, the, the Advanced nuclear reactor and the science and engineering of the advanced reactor has been known for the past 50 years, and it's still you know pretty well uh, studied today. What we really need to educate is the entrepreneurial aspect of nuclear, because when we talk about advanced nuclear, we talk about nuclear innovation. People have to understand that there is space for uh, um, you know uh, ventures and and uh, enterprise uh, to grow 
as as it has been shown in electronics or um, in uh, you know in the rocket uh, in rocket development more recently or even in automated cars, but there is a time now that is very crucial for nuclear innovation in the term of entrepreneurship. And so Professor Russell Slabel out of UC Berkeley decided to uh, create the first edition of the nuclear innovation Boot camp in 2016. Uh, so she started that on her own, and myself, I joined for the 2017 uh, Nuclear Innovation Boot Camp, the year after that, and River uh, joined us in, uh, in 2018 uh, and forward uh, after that. So I really, this boot camp uh, has developed over the, over the past four years, and here I'll talk a little bit about the objective of the boot camp, uh, how we, you know, what is the context, what, what are the contexts of the boot And after that, uh, we will talk about uh, what we've done this year and also what will be the future of the book. So, uh, the Nuclear Book Camp uh, Innovation Book Camp objectives are three of them. The first one is really, uh, you know, it sounds simple, but it's really to create a space where people can meet. And uh, those participants that are pre selected based on, uh, you know, their um, uh, statement and their curriculum. Uh, those uh, the participants, which are about 25 uh, in total, they are really, really eager to develop advanced nuclear. They all come with different skills, and uh, the, the boot can provide them a place where they meet and they can become uh, associates, friends, they can develop connections, interact, and you know, uh, get innovative ideas and really build for the future. And we have a few success stories about that, which are uh, quite interesting. The second one. It also, of course, to educate uh, them. So they, they all come with different backgrounds, uh, with their own expertise, but really we give them a large portfolio of um, tools, uh, literally tools, so that when they come back home or where they want to uh, uh, build their own venture, they can really um, uh, you know, have all the tools necessary to do that. Uh, so uh, we know when they interact with their friends, family, and so on, they can really provide a good argument about why advanced nuclear is needed, and they have all the tools to be successful in the development of those advanced nuclear. And finally, uh, the idea is really here to give those tools such that those uh, participants can become actors of change in the future. Uh, whether it is in nuclear, whether it is, you know, some of them are going to the renewable industries for wind and solar and so on, and that is fine. Uh, but it's very important for us to, to, to give them all the tools necessary for to be uh, uh, to have to take decisive action and to become really uh, a force of proposition uh, in their own enterprise. So the concept of the boot camp, uh, it's as I mentioned, approximately 25 selected participants. It varies between you know, 20 and 30 depends on the years. Uh, this is a two-week event, so it's relatively long. Uh, usually in the summer, and we uh, select students and early career professionals, uh, and we, for two weeks, are going to work very intensively on a, a, you know, a variety of topics, uh, such as, for instance, you know, we give them a little bit of the challenges of the nuclear industry, but also on the opportunity. Uh, we talk very, you know, lightly about the, what is the advanced nuclear technology, but more, more importantly, uh, we, we teach them the, um, you know, some basics information on creative innovation, how to uh, perform product development and marketing, how to finance venture, and what are the fundamentals when you start your own venture. We also give them uh, some uh, tools to um, speak with credibility and confidence in front of an audience because at the end of the day, they're also going to have to obtain funding. Uh, from uh, either venture capital or government, so they're going to be they're going to have to be uh, very uh, credible, and and then a few other things such as communication, community engagement, which are important tools uh, for um, uh, successful uh, venture in advanced nuclear. So uh, how do we do? How do we teach those tools? Well, uh, we have we invite always um, professionals. Uh, from all over the globe, uh, they come to the boot camp uh, usually uh, for free, and they take their own time to explain and uh, teach the students and the early career professionals 
um, related to the concept that was mentioned earlier. Uh, so we have panels that you know gather experts from all across the world. Uh, we also have uh, uh, you know single speakers that are teaching on different aspects. Uh, but really, um, this is active. Like, as, you, as you can see here, it's a very informal setting. It doesn't look like a classroom. People can ask questions. Uh, and, uh, and really, we want uh, an active participation rather than just a classic lecture setting. Uh, then, also, the, during the bootcamp, uh, early on, the uh, uh, participants come together and develop uh, innovative ideas. The, the, the important aspect of the bootcamp, one of the important aspects, is that the participants will come in groups and they will uh, uh, develop uh, a project, uh, an innovative project. Uh, and they will present that project after the two weeks uh, with, a, with a big competition. And so it's very important that, that there is a strong um, framework for them to develop innovative. Ideas, so to generate innovative ideas and then they come together very organically. Uh, so here you see pictures where we will, uh, uh, everyone put ID on the board and then people look at them, uh, people add more things. And very, after a few hours, it's interesting because really uh, you're going to see a group of three to four participants coming together. Uh, that, uh, it's always enjoyable to see that happening. Um, and to help them develop those ideas uh, into actual, um, uh, you know, tangible uh, companies, uh, then, uh, the, the help of mentors, in addition to all the lectures that they're uh, looking at, they're participating into, uh, there is also mentors on site or remote that can help them um, uh, define the idea a little better and, and so on. And so, here you see mentors talking to uh, the different participants, and you know, after a little survey, uh, definitely uh, two thirds of the, of the participants uh, estimated that mentors. Uh, and uh, and so this is something that is very important. Also, is not only to uh, select participants, but to make sure we have a large cohort of mentors. Uh, and you know, this could be former participants of the bootcamp, could be experts uh, that are of course more mature and have many years of expertise in their in the field. Um, so as I mentioned at the end, uh, the participants uh, uh, present their projects. Uh, as a, as a uh, and there's a jury of experts. You, you see the picture here at the bottom. So the, the, uh, person, they have a list of criteria, uh, metrics to, uh, I would say, uh, evaluate the different groups. And uh, it, they are, of course, in there. And they always you know, uh, point out the positiveness and the, and the lack sometimes of clarity of the project. Uh, but at the end, there is, a, there is definitely a, a team that wins uh, this group, uh, that this competition. Yeah. Um, so with this, I will just uh, leave it to um, uh, revert to take, to take the rest of the presentation. All right, great. Let's see if I can share. You have to stop sharing first. Great. So <clears throat> the exciting thing about this pat or the 2019 boot camp was that our winners were awarded um, money to go travel to Australia to Sydney, where they competed in the International Youth Nuclear Congress. Um, Pitch competition, so it was a it was a week long con or a convention, but they also had the opportunity to share their um, their idea. And the team that we sent the Global Remote Education Service, uh, they actually won the technical uh, prize, so that was an exciting win. And then, yeah. right. So this is you know some of the examples of the innovator projects. Mitigation service, or sorry, strategy. Um, they were the ones who won in 2019. In Australia, to continue. Some other interesting, innovative uh, 
features were sub R. So the idea was putting a, a small modular reactor on a submarine and piloting it to disaster zones to provide electricity and support. There was also Condor, which did work in digital cycle technology, zero carbon, uh, which was kind of a, you know, a public education or engagement tool for for gaming on your telephone so you can learn how energy mixes are, are made. Um, there was another one that was one of my favorites, which was bringing heat, which is using uh, plant cooling water from nuclear power plants to grow vegetables. And then concrete, which was a, a venture to use drones in order to check the concrete quality before the construction process, the nuclear power plant. And so these are a few of the pitch projects, you know, and some of the projects that were made by the expense, but a number of these also went on to become actual projects in the real world. So one of them, for example, went on to go get a grant to start a company at, um, at Argonne National Laboratory where they got funding and started their own company where they're getting, uh, where they're soliciting funders and, and building a product that deals with uh, nuclear waste products. Uh, we have another participant, uh, other participants who have started consulting um, companies based on all types of technologies, but also uh, with focuses on diversity hiring and, and getting uh, a more diverse pool of people working in the, in the nuclear energy industry. So it's a, it's a cool example that you know, these these companies get designed within the boot camp and actually have a life afterwards uh, in the real world. And so our participants are using this experience to, um, to kind of uh, prototype an idea and then, and then see how it works out in the real world. So another good example of that actually here is sub R, um, the second one where they've um, started working or they, they received a, a grant to work within a, a startup incubator in Paris. So, again, a lot of these go on um, to become real world projects. Um, 2019 was also a special year because it was our most diverse group. And so, a core value of the boot camp is really making sure that we are not only introducing our participants to innovative thinking, but also introducing more diverse. Um, you know, uh, group of workers into the sector because uh, it's important to, to increase representation of certain communities that are underrepresented. So in 2019, uh, we had a really um, great kind of uh, array of, of different uh, countries represented in careers, and we had a good balance between men and women. So you know, exciting um, to continue focusing on diversity, and this is something that we're going to continue focusing. Um, now and into the future. So because of COVID-19, we, we got creative this year and instead of having a new boot camp with new participants, we, we took the time to, to reflect on where the boot camp has been and where it's, sort of, where it's been over the last five years and where it's going. And so we hosted a virtual summit and all of our alumni were invited and um, you can see here Adrian and Rachel and I uh, spent some time presenting and it was an, a fun opportunity because we had all the alumni in one place and we got to discuss uh, not only the boot camp but also get some very exciting speakers in talking about nuclear energy, talking about technology um, and its impact within the climate movement. So we had you know exciting presenters that we wouldn't normally have had um, in a traditional nuclear energy conference. Right? So some of them, for example, include Leah Stokes, who's a pretty famous climate activist and professor in the United States. She's a professor of political science at the uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. We also had nuclear energy companies like Oklo represented, a micro reactor company. Um, we had the Energy for Growth Hub, which is a, a think tank in Washington, D.C. focused on not specifically nuclear, but energy in general and how we can deliver uh, energy to developing countries at scale and in large urban setting in addition to the small you know, rural that a lot of development um, 
funding tends to target. And then also we had representatives of the youth climate activist organization called the Sunrise Movement. And so it was nice to be able to bring in both nuclear companies, but also a diverse array of communities that are not traditionally representative or even necessarily supportive of nuclear. And so the boot camp is becoming a really useful platform for having conversations with new communities and really making friends in new places. And so going forward, we want to continue to focus on that on that mission, right? We want to be able to make sure that we continue reaching out to new participants in new places um, where we can increase the diversity of our experience and background. So we want to make sure that we're getting you know, participants in the boot camp who don't necessarily only come from nuclear engineering, but also come from other disciplines and help them to find out how they might be you know, become important members of the of the nuclear energy community. So we like to think that preparing and advanced nuclear and preparing nuclear for, for this century really relies on a diverse skill set that um, doesn't only exist in And in addition to that, we're also focused on diversifying our where we get our funding from and who our presenters are. And in the same um, kind of spirit, we want to make sure that we're at all times reaching outside of our comfort zone and, and interacting with new communities. So this is just some of our sponsors from the past year. And then again, the locations where uh, the boot camp took place. And we're looking forward to continuing to grow this funding community in the, uh, the locations where we host. So that's been a focus of um, our, a lot of our conversations recently, finding out where we want to host future boot camps um, once we start having in-person conferences again. So we've been reaching out uh, to our alumni and to other interested parties and we've gotten lots of exciting um, suggestions, right? Including different parts of the United States, Oregon, Korea, and of course Japan. So uh, we're really looking forward to working together with with everyone you know, in Japan and everyone in the organization to start uh, engaging with there in order to figure out how we can build a, a new generation boot camp um, addition in Japan sometime soon. So we're very excited for the future and I look forward to working together. Okay, I think that's, that's it for us. Um, do you have any other questions, Toru? Uh, thank you, uh, Adrian, and thank you, Riva, uh, for the very uh, good uh, presentation. I think uh, it's very, very informative for Japanese uh, kids. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, this uh, kind of activity is very useful in the field of the new, uh, field of nuclear engineering. Uh, so uh, you. Uh, uh, in the uh, boot camp, what kind of topics uh, are uh, 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 proposed to the uh, student? Uh, what kind of topics uh, 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 are given to the student for their workshop? Could you give us some information about that? Yeah, um, so, so there are two different things, right? There, There is the... the um, the tools that we give them, uh, which is uh, you know a few um, we have we have a slide where we really have all the different topics that were approached uh, and uh, during during the weeks, and you know that goes from advanced technology to uh, things such as um, uh, licensing in nuclear. So we, we give them very broad uh, you know uh, concepts on those topics, but the ideas that they have so the topics that they're gonna Speak to actually develop during the two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, those are completely free. We are not suggesting anything to the participants. Uh, really, they have uh, a total autonomy to choose which topic they want to pick, they want to study for the next, uh, you know, two weeks. 
So uh, we try not to give them any boundaries. So sometimes we have to help them refine things a little bit. That's where mentors are useful, but really uh, the topics um, are completely free. Uh, and then, so you know, they can. Some of them are trying to develop mobile mobile application on their uh, smartphone to teach about advanced software. Other are looking at uh, developing YouTube channels to uh, educate people on advanced nuclear. Others are looking at developing, um, uh, you know, as, as I was as you once mentioned, uh, we use the local uh, the, the local water from the nuclear power plant, the cooling water, uh, which is a little bit uh, hot. Grow vegetables like cucumbers, tomatoes, and so on. Um, so, so this is really diverse, um, and uh, and well, I think it's really a strength as well. That, can, that that there is diversity in the projects that are being chosen, and that they're not part of a library where students have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the students can choose their topics uh, topic uh, from this list, for example. I yeah, so. I mean, they will, uh, they will, most likely their topic will cover multiple aspects of this list. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is more general about uh, the development of a company. So, the, the, you know, first you need to find uh, a challenge. I mean, you need to have you're trying to solve, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's you know, the first step and the first bullet points here can help with that. Then you have to find funding and you have to develop that venture uh, and, uh, and you have to engage with, um, with actors such as uh, NGO and governments. So, so really, a single uh, project Okay, and uh, uh, you mentioned uh, about the mentor, uh, so the student can uh, mentor come to the boot camp or uh, they accept uh, the question in their workplace. So we have two types of mentors. Mm -hmm. um, we have one type which we which are in person. Right? They're actually at the boot camp and. They interact with the students, and um, I guess I guess there's a few different kinds. But I mean, we, we have some who are present, and then we have uh, some who are available online or over the phone. But the main distinction um, is not necessarily uh, where they are, but how available they make themselves. So for example, we have continuous mentors who are pretty much available at any time. Um, that a group or a student needs to talk to them. They, they represent all different types of, um, of expertise, right? So we have engineering professionals, business professionals, and mm -hmm. communications and all this type of stuff. Um, and we have other ones who have more limited availability. How many, how many mentors do you have in that? Uh, good question. Um, I mean, very continuous active mentors, I would say between five and 10, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for mentors, like you know, mentors that have, that are remote mentors or emails, for instance, uh, then it's more between 20 and 30. Uh -huh. um, uh, so they all you know, come with different ideas. Uh, we, of course, you know, contact them earlier before the bootcamp to make sure that they're available, uh, but, What's important is also as we grow our alumni population, because we keep having the bootcamp every year, and we, we have more and more alumni. The alumni, when they leave the bootcamp, they, they, they become alumni, they still are very attached to the bootcamp. And so they are making a lot of effort to make themselves available to mentor future generations. And I think as we keep having the bootcamp every year, uh, that will be a very interesting community uh, where uh, we can really build that mentorship from the group. Uh, and that would be super exciting, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, after that, uh, can I ask you to give a message to Japanese participants? Uh, Adrian, 
Uh, well, you know, um, we always had Japanese, um, uh, I mean, I think maybe maybe every year we had Japanese mm -hmm. participants at the camp. Um, and uh, of course, we know Japan is a leader in, uh, in nuclear and nuclear innovation. Uh, so we're super happy uh, that uh, we're super glad that there is a, a movement uh, that is uh, starting in Japan uh, that is um, correlated to the nuclear innovation bootcamp. That you know, that there is definitely some uh, uh, interesting collaboration that we, we were really hoping to uh, uh, build together. And uh, I will say a matane, as we say in Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, uh, we will come to Japan and work with you. Thank you very much. Are you happy? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a special connection between the United States and Japan for a lot of reasons. And, and I think it would be exciting um, for us to continue that relationship uh, with, with the boot camp specifically. And so, as Adrian mentioned, we've, we've always had participants and um, and professors and, and, and members of the boot camp community who are either from Japan or have worked there. And um, we, we think it's a, a really valuable partnership to continue. Um, we think there's a lot of very exciting things happening in nuclear um, that require activating and, and, and getting young people interested and involved and especially especially young people who, who wouldn't traditionally think about working in nuclear energy or maybe don't think that it's an, uh, an important technology or a good career path. And so um, sometimes you have to be more proactive about finding those, finding those people and, and introducing them to this work. And I think this is what the boot camp is, is designed for. And so I hope that we can work with Japan to continue doing that in your country in the same way that we've been doing it in ours. 